In case you missed it, here's Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. Well, when you talk about the day and age we live in now, and these days you talk about AI being a concern for people. Privacy, obviously, a big concern. Mm -hmm. Well, what about your cell phone? The cell phone knows a lot about you. Yeah, your smartphones really are smart. Um, Like it knows every place you've ever been. Androids and iPhones have internal tracking devices that can see your location at any time. In the settings, you can look up location services and you can turn it off, but many of the apps you have downloaded on your phone won't work then. Everything you've told Siri is another thing your smartphone knows. Apple collects data from Siri to, quote, understand you better and recognize what you say. Uh Uh-huh. So it says. Wink, wink. Uh, This can include trending searches, even the way you pronounce words. The good news, the info is connected to your phone with a random ID to at least try and ensure some anonymity. Mm -hmm. Your smartphone also knows every message you've ever sent. If you're the type who deletes texting, iMessages, conversations afterwards, uh, you might be surprised to know Apple actually keeps those messages in an encrypted form for a limited period of time before they finally delete them. Uh, No one really seems to know, though, how long they're actually kept for. Also, other things your smartphone knows. All the info you've ever given Google. Androids are powered by Google Apps, so as soon as you sign into your Android with your Google login, your phone is linked to all your other Google accounts. That means your phone has access to everything Google does, including the length and type of your phone calls, your device, where you are, and more. And finally, your smartphone knows just how fast you drive. Because your iPhone not only tracks your location, it also records the time you arrive and leave. So it can do the math to figure out how long it'll take you to get places, and then send you, sends you notifications when it notices a trend. So it'll tell you it'll take you X minutes to get to you know, whatever frequently visited location. I mean, we've always joked about them listening, right? And mm-hmm. you, you get ads or whatever sometimes or, you know, targeted things. Yep. We were talking about, uh, you know, the gutters around uh, my mother-in-law's place and they don't have gutter guards. And I'm like, well, you know, probably get up there. I'm getting ads now for gutter guards and uh, also gutters in general. <laughs> so, you know, that's not something I've searched out and especially not recently. Boom, that starts to pop up. Although I was thinking the other day about how it knows every place you've ever been. I feel like the security people at Android and, and Apple are looking at it and going, man, this person goes to the same like three places all the time. <laughs> are they still on their couch? Are they still at their house? Couch, bed, house. Yum. Science. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Check it out. I blinded us with science. What you want it? Well, if you've ever wondered about the importance of reading for your kids, children who start reading for pleasure early in life tend to end up with better school marks and better mental health outcomes as teenagers. So this new study found a strong link between reading about 12 hours a week. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? 12 hours a week when you're a kid? And improved performance on cognitive tests later in adolescence. One of the researchers said reading isn't just a pleasurable experience, it's widely accepted that it inspires thinking and creativity, increases empathy, and can help reduce stress. I'm just thinking if you're in school though, you're probably reading for maybe at least an hour a day. I mean, it's like cumulative, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You're not reading a novel for two hours every day, but maybe you're reading a novel for 30 minutes, plus you know, you're reading your science textbook, English stuff. Yeah, it all adds up to Mm -hmm. multiple hours a day, I guess. If you're looking to avoid jet lag on your next flight, forget the sleeping pills and an eye mask. Maybe you should be trying chocolate. Researchers created some simulations of a long haul plane ride as an airline is preparing to debut a direct to Sydney from New York route in 2025. It would be a treacherous 20 hour long flight. So the study, they found that those who ate chocolate experienced better sleep quality in flight less severe jet lag and better cognitive performance in the two days after the flight. And I would even say they're happier too. Do you ever wonder about your expired food if it's really expired? I know we're talking about in Canada, the best before dates and Mm -hmm. that kind of thing they're talking about doing from a government level. Well, a PhD student has invented a a sensor that determines if something has actually gone bad. Is it his nose? Uh, The food sensor reports a food's pH levels. Uh, pH levels are higher when food has spoiled. So the invention has already been tested on fruit, fish, and milk. 
Uh, by the way, the average person tosses about $3,000 worth of food every year. Well, and if you can get some sensor that hooks up to your smartphone, right, to read it. Wow, you talk about things uh, adding up. It could save you a lot of money in the long run. Food in the garbage. And finally, a Florida man who recently broke the world record for the most amount of time spent living underwater claims that he actually shrunk during that time. Astronauts grow about an inch to an inch and a half. I shrunk about a half an inch. Because astronauts are in tension, right. so they're basically being flung apart, yes. and I'm being compressed together. Here I am, the tall guy, right? And I'm constantly scraping my head on the escape hatch on top. And I was like, hey, I'm not hitting the escape hatch anymore. When I get to the surface, I am 72 and a little bit inches. Have you noticed there's been a lot more earwigs around? This yeah, year. I've I found a bunch in my house recently in the last couple of days or so, but I was reading something that said that the reason they're kind of thriving is because they love the warm and humid weather. And since we've been getting so much rain, it's like perfect conditions for them to just breed and take and off. I've noticed them outside too. Like don't leave anything laying around. I mean, the cover off the barbecue, I had it down on the ground for a couple of days, mm -hmm. just on the side of the house and lifted it up. And it was like, ah, there's like a little colony that all, oh no, there's light, scatter. Now I did send you a video the other day for like a homemade sort of like earwig trap. Um, what was it? Was it soy sauce or I think it was something? Soy sauce and oil. So like a little cooking oil and, yeah, and soy she, sauce. And she just put it in, it was like the lid of a container and just stuck it in the garden. And the next day she went out and there was like, it was just filled. And it had only been one day mm -hmm. that she'd done this. And she made it level with the ground. So she kind of had a little divot in her garden, put that in there. And if you're worried about them getting to your garden and getting into things, mm -hmm. it might be a way to combat that. I saw another one where somebody was using like an, an old toilet paper roll mm -hmm. and they wet it. And so they twisted one of the ends shut. And I don't know if they put something in there. Or if it's just the fact that it's wet. And they maybe because it's wet because they do like that moist. And if you put that out in the sun and it's wet, maybe they're, they're attracted to it. And then they can't get out from there. But I, I mean, not that I'm wanting to go out there and start killing wildlife. But when you're in my house, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you need to be outside. Or they're in your garden, right? You know, you've got these raised flower beds to try to keep the bunnies out. Now you got earwigs in there instead. <laughs> well, and if it's not earwigs, now I'm seeing the flying ants are out. Mm -hmm. Delightful. Uh, the, those uh, Japanese beetles. I have seen lots of people Bad with traps, traps out again. Yeah, I picked one of those up. And then uh, there was a yellow jacket yesterday on the walk, kind of buzzing around. And I actually, I took my ball cap and I flipped him and he went flying away. Because <laughs> he was like buzzing around my face all of a sudden while mm -hmm. for a walk with the dog. And I'm just like, but the earwigs. Mm. Been seeing them everywhere. We had a stat yesterday saying that on average, we throw away like up to $3,000 of food every year. And you think, oh, well, how's that possible? Well, you think about all the things you buy, even takeout that maybe you don't finish, mm -hmm. throw that out, meals that you put in the fridge. I fully intend to eat this. And then it uh, develops, you know, a nice little fur over it. You know, the person I was when I bought all that lettuce at the grocery store, it's not the person at 10 o'clock at night when I want just like, you know, a bag of chips and a cookie. And I mean, and even things like that, if you leave cookies for too long, they can get stale. So someone put together some great tips that people were sharing online for, you know, maybe stretching your food budget a bit. Yeah, specifically your produce. So when it comes to carrots, you can actually revive old bendy carrots. You know when that happens and they're like, like a limp noodle? Um, actually, what you should do is put them in cold water and that will rehydrate them. And in just five minutes, you're ready to go. Sweet potato skins is another tip they were talking about. So after cooking, they say peel and season the skins before frying them in a pan, then top them with dressing, maybe fresh herbs for a great snack. Now, personally, I, I eat the skins most often. Yeah, I usually wash the sweet potato and then, you know, dice it up and roast it in the oven with the skins on. I think it's great. But this is another way of something you, normally you might peel it. This is a way to kind of use those and they're really nutritious for you too. Mm -hmm. uh, another way to get the most out of your produce, you can make a DIY vegetable stock. So when you have all those vegetable scraps and peels, chuck them into a freezer bag and put them in the freezer. Then when you have a full bag, add all of it to boiling water and season with things like, you know, bay leaf, peppercorn, and boil it and you make your own vegetable stock, which is delicious and in any recipe that calls for chicken, beef, or vegetable stock, you can use your own instead. Berries. I mean, we get so many fresh berries in our area and they're so delicious, but 
if they start going a little mushy, they say you put them into an ice bath. It gives them back that fresh look and taste. Mm, very nice. Also, I'm a big supporter of throwing them into the freezer and that when they do get maybe a little too mushy, just freeze them and then put them in a Ziploc bag. Good to go with these. So that's Miranda Lambert at a show this past weekend in Las Vegas where she's playing. And now, first of all, you think about Las Vegas. Those venues are not the biggest. You're not talking about a stadium here. You're not talking about a massive size concert venue per se. So it's a little bit more intimate. And she was in the midst of singing Tin Man and these women that were near the front got up, stood up, and started taking photographs and selfies. But there was flashes going on, and they were pretty bright, too, and it mm -hmm. wasn't just one. And that's why Miranda decided to stop the show and then scold these women. So now, you know, both sides of the story have come out, more details. Um, so you were telling me that some of the women that were in the photo said they felt, you know, kind of ashamed and scolded for just taking a photo. And that they were, you know, felt attacked, that all they were doing is trying to have fun at the show. And now Miranda, has her name has been trending on Twitter the last day or so. But then some other people that were at the show had vid shared videos and photos that they took of the whole incident saying, and when we looked at the one, the women were in the front row, literally stood up. So other people couldn't see Miranda performing and then we're having their photo taken with a really bright flash. And it wasn't just like one quick photo. It was like four or five. Mm -hmm. And it was a bright flash right in front of Miranda. She's trying to perform a song acoustically, just her and acoustic guitar. I don't blame her for getting distracted. I mean, it's one thing if someone gets up and does that one the fact that it went on and on and on that she was just like, okay, now, like, guys, what are you doing? You're blocking other people's view to start with. But at the same time, then people are saying, well, they paid money. They paid for their tickets. What do you think? 519-351-6300. Where do you weigh in on this one? I think there's a time and a place. Maybe if you wanted to grab a quick selfie, the song Tin Man wouldn't be the appropriate one to do it. Yeah, you know, maybe do Gunpowder and Lead instead or, or just about any of her other up-tempo songs right someone online put a great perspective they're a big taylor swift fan they said to put it in perspective imagine if taylor played a super up close and personal show and right as she launched into one of her you know slower songs uh some people in the vi seats vip seats in front of you asked you to take photos of them with their backs to taylor she said you know it's not something that would be very cool to do although other artists have encouraged it and they get down there and they take photos with people but again Pick your moment. Well, this is a moment where it was literally just like Miranda on a stool with a guitar with a spotlight. You know, there wasn't the big production value during this part of the show. She's not going out trying to encourage crowd engagement. It was a very sort of quiet moment break in the show, giving the rest of her band a break. And then this happens. I mean, I can only imagine how I would have felt if I was sitting a couple rows back and now suddenly I can't see Miranda performing Tin Man, which is... One of my favorite songs. And by the way, it wasn't just one person or two. It was about five or six yeah. people. So they're spread out across and you've got these flashes going off. Yeah, Take like another it, picture. Wasn't it a another professional picture. camera? Like the flash is really bright. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I also look at this too and I think, I bet you, given that the type of venue she was performing in, one of the I think it's uh, places in Vegas. Planet Hollywood, I the theater there. I bet you on their ticket, it says no flash photography. People still do it. Mm -hmm. But you're really not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, they say you can take photos, but you got to turn the flash off. Clearly that was not. And like you said, was it a professional camera? Tammy had texted us earlier saying, I think Miranda's concerts are a reflection of her personality. And I think the ladies were just out having a night of fun. Maybe that particular song was very personal to her. And it is. Uh, she has said one of her more personal songs that she has written. Pick your moments and pick your spots. Yes, you've paid for the tickets. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. The other thing recently has been people throwing things on stage. Yeah. Again. Respect that, the artists. That doesn't allow you to do whatever you want just because you paid your way into the show. Do you use a ceiling fan? Do you have one at your house? Oh, yeah. I've got one in the bedroom, one in my living room. 
And then I also have other fans around the house. I have one of those... It's this old box fan that's metal. It oh, moves so much man. air, man. And those are the ones you could talk into. And, you yeah, know, sound yeah. like Darth Vader. I've yeah, I've dried my hair in front of it before. It's very powerful. <laughs> well, there's a tip that may save you a little bit of money. Apparently, there's no point in leaving a ceiling fan on unless someone's in the room. Well, here's why. So apparently, fans in general don't cool the air off. They're just cooling you off. So if you leave the room on, or if you leave them on when no one's in the room, you're just wasting electricity. So your body cools itself off through the evaporation of sweat. And when air moves across your skin, that happens faster. It also carries heat away from your body, so fans actually cool you down in two different ways. But they don't actually change the temperature of the air itself. So unless you're in the room with the fan blowing on you, it's not really doing that much. Now, they say the one exception is when you've got a window or door open and the fan is helping to move new air in. So maybe taking that box fan and putting it, you know, in the window as Mm -hmm. we used to do. I've done that before. The motor gives off a little heat, though. So in some cases, it could actually raise the temperature in the room. Now, pets are another reason you might want to leave on the fan when you're not home, because obviously the air moving cools them down. Yeah, this time of year, every time I leave the house, I got to turn the box fan. So it's facing Coda in his kennel there to help keep him keep him cool. Another tip, too, don't forget to change the direction of your fans. In the summer, you want to make sure that your ceiling fan is spinning counterclockwise because it pushes the cooler air down. If it's running clockwise, it's pushing the air, it's pulling the air up and can actually make the room feel warmer. I mean, how many of us are guilty of leaving the ceiling fans on basically from May till September? So something you might want to, you know, think about and save yourself a couple dollars. All right, we all know that person in our lives that's seemingly always late for everything. It doesn't matter. You say, okay, show up at this time. They show up later. You're ready, you know, ready to go somewhere. They're not ready to go. Saying, I, I'm, I'm on my way. Meanwhile, they're literally at home still getting dressed. Is it a thing? Apparently, there's something called time blindness that people are claiming they have. So I'm flying to go somewhere, and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time? And then the person I was with, interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time. Yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. Okay, it's not an actual medical condition, but doctors use time blindness as a way of talking about the concept of losing track of time. And some people can be more prone to it than others. And that's because our brains are constantly shifting between two types of attention, automatic attention and directed attention. So automatic attention, that's your happy place. That's when you're able to focus on something very easily because you're doing something you like or find interesting. But directed attention, that's what you use when you're trying to get engaged in something that, you know, you have to do, but maybe not necessarily want to do, you know, like things at work. So during periods of automatic attention, you can get so engrossed and hyper-focused on what you're doing that you lose track of time. But during directed attention, it can be really hard to stay focused at all. So for some, it can be manageable. Others deal with it, you know, have a little bit more of a trouble doing it. So what can you do? Well, one suggestion, they say set a timer on your phone to alert you when it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Or get one of those like oven timers that'll ding really loudly when that you can set, like, you know, you need to leave in 30 minutes, set it for 30 minutes. Uh, When you don't have a lot of time, they say try to avoid activities that you know you'll have a tendency to get lost in. So maybe don't start binge watching that show. Also try the if-then technique. Set goals for yourself to reach, like making dinner, and then after you do that, then move on to the next thing on your list. So some people are more list-oriented than others. So my daughter was telling us that Our granddaughter, she's seven. I mean, old enough now. You say, okay, throw some things in a bag. Well, she was freaking out about putting, you know, well, what do I bring? What do I pack? So she made her a list. And she loved that because she could check things off. Okay, I've got this. I've got my toothpaste. I've got this. I've got that. Yeah, so that's a great example of there's different techniques to help you deal with this. Find what works for you and stick with it. Well, this is the definition of real bad and a huge oh no moment. There's a lab in upstate New York at a university and they're suing a cleaning company because a little while back, 
A janitor who worked there ruined decades worth of research. And you thought you've had a bad day at work before. Uh, Apparently this lab has a super cold freezer holding cell culture samples, other research materials. And the freezer would make a beeping sound. Now, there was a sign explaining that the beeping is normal. I think it's to let them know that it is still working. But it also had a sign explaining that you could just, what to do if you wanted to mute the beeping for a little while. The janitor was in this lab working, cleaning up, and he found the beeping to be, quote, annoying. So he decided to unplug the freezer. Unplugged the freezer. That caused the temperature to slowly rise from minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 25, enough to wipe out over 25 years of research. So now that um, cleaning company is getting sued by the lab. Um, In the lawsuit, apparently they say it caused about a million dollars in damages. And the cleaning company has not commented. Well, I mean, at this point, you're getting the lawyers all rounded up and ready to go. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm assuming they've got some sort of liability insurance that might have to get involved. But I guess we can just blame this guy if we're unable to figure out cures for things like the common cold in the next couple of years. Because oh. it could have been in the it could have been figured out, but you destroyed all the materials because he got annoyed by some beeping. You've been listening to Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. 